Make money with an app is a goal pursued by many developers. To help Android developers, we launched the in-app billing API v3 in 2013. To make it easier for developers to offer in-app products and subscription within their apps. And now, we are taking a new step to simplify billing further with the new Play Billing library. This library includes several convenience classes, as well as a wrapper for the billing service, allowing you to focus on implementing the logic specific to your app. In-app billing relies on the Google Play Store app, which handles the communication between your app and Google's billing service. To use in-app billing features, your app must first request the Con Android Vending billing permission in your Android Manifest XML file. Choose the library at the following dependency in your build Gradle file. But attention, check on the Play Billing library page for the latest version number to add the correct dependency in your app. After this setup, you are good to go and start using the Play Billing library. To start sending billing requests, you must establish a connection to the service on Google Play using the following steps. First, creating a billing client instance using the builder class, passing the constructor a context and set a reference to an instance of purchase updated listener. You can implement this interface in your activity. When the user finishes a purchase process, Google Play calls the onPurchase updated method on the listener that implements the purchase updated listener interface, where you should handle the transaction result. Second, establish a connection to the in app billing service on Google Play. The setup process is asynchronous, and you must implement a billing client state listener to receive a callback once the setup is completed. Override the own billing services connected callback method and implement your own retry policy to handle lost connections to the in-app billing service in the case the client loses connection. For example, the Play Billing Library client may lose connection if the Play Store service is updating in the background. You can check the full sample code in our documentation. With your app connected to Google Play, you can start sending requests for in-app products. Let's start by listing the products available for purchase, executing the asynchronous method query sq details async. To make a request using query sq details async, you have to specify the purchase type, in this case, sq type in app, and a list of product ID strings, where each record is a product ID for a purchasable item. These product IDs were defined by you when you created the product list on the Google Play Console. For more information about creating a product list, see Administering in-app billing. You must also specify a listener which implements the SQ Details Response Listener interface that overrides the on SQ Details Response method to handle the method result. Call the response code method on the SQ Details Result object to check for the response code. The response code should be billing response OK if the requested finish successfully. To view all the possible response codes from Google Play, see Play Billing Library reference. To retrieve the list of SQDetails objects, call the getSQDetailsList method from the SQDetails result. You can call a variety of methods on the SQDetails objects to view relevant information about each item, such as its price or description. Of course, being able to just list products doesn't lead to profit. To start a purchase request from your app, Call the launch billing flow method on the Play Billing Library client from the UI thread. Pass a reference to the billing flow params object that contains the relevant data to complete the purchase, such as a product ID of an item and the purchase type, in this case, SQ type in app. To get an instance of billing flow params, use the billing flow params builder class. Calling the launch billing flow method displays a Google Play UI purchase screen. Google Play provides an interface for users to enter their payment method. As mentioned earlier, when the user finishes the process, Google Play calls the onPurchaseUpdate method on the listener that implements the purchase update listener interface. In this method, each purchase will be an item in a list, as you can see here. When you receive the purchase response from Google Play, perform a secure validation on your own backend. Don't trust the client since an Android app could be the compiler in your security checks replaced with stubs. To retrieve the history of user purchase, call the query purchase method on the Play Billing Library client. The Google Play service returns the purchase made by the user account associated with the app install. If the request is successful, the Play Billing Library stores the query result in a list of purchasable objects. To retrieve the list, call the getPurchaseList method on the purchase result object. 
The purchase object has methods to view relevant information about the item, such as the purchase date or time. Google Play prevents the user from owning more than one copy of an item by product ID. The item must be consumed before it can be purchased again. Your app controls how items are consumed. To consume items, you first implement an instance of Consume Response Listener to handle the consumption result. Then, you call the Consume Async method on the Play Billing Library client, passing the identifying purchase token string value. In the response code in OnConsumeFinished from your Consume Response Listener, is billing OK, it's time to call a method that implements the logic in your app to update the player's inventory or release credits to be used. Another great feature covered by Play Billing API is subscriptions. But before launching the billing flow for subscriptions, call the isFeatureSupported method on the Play Billing Library client to check the device supports subscriptions with the type as feature type subscriptions. Purchasing or renewing a subscription is similar to launching the purchase flow for a product. You just set the product type to SKU type subs and the product ID of the subscription before you call launching billing flow. If the user is changing the subscription option, you must also pass the product IDs for the subscription items you are replacing in the billing flow params object using the add old SQ method. You can create an instance of billing flow params using the billing flow params builder class. Just as in purchase, Google Play returns the result of the operation using the own purchase update callback. This library is designed and maintained by our engineers, and we make plan to keep it up to date with the latest in-app billing API and Google Play app. If you want to see details of how to use the Play Bean library, including support for Android Wear and Android TV, check the refreshed version of the Trivial Drive sample. We look forward to hearing your feedback about this new library. Thanks for watching. Bye.